εν αρχή ειν ο λόγος και ο λόγος ειν προς τον Θεόν και Θεός ειν ο λόγος. This video examines the meaning of each Greek word, gives some of the historical background of Logos, explains the difference between God was the Word and the Word was God, compares the use of the Greek and English articles, and provides a reading exercise of John 1, 1 to 14 in Greek. In ancient Greek literature, there is no difference in meaning between the two-word adverbial phrase enarchi and the three-word adverbial phrase endiarchi, except that enarchi is used more frequently. So the translation of enarchi as in the beginning fits quite well. Enarchi in the beginning echoes Genesis 1.1, Enarchi episen o theos, in the beginning God created. But in John 1 1, enarchi in, in the beginning was, refers to a state that already existed in the beginning of creation. The Greek term logos is found in a number of English words as L-O-G, logic, logical, logistics, logarithm, prologue, epilogue, dialogue, and so on. Logos can have a multiplicity of senses depending on context. It can mean word, reason, cause, message, understanding, account, speech, and literally dozens of other meanings. Logos is commonly associated with a spoken word or simply word. Indeed, logos is translated and understood as word in several New Testament passages. For example, the logos spoken by Jesus, the logos of God in the parable of the sower, a logos of wisdom or of knowledge, the logos of Christ, the logos of God. However, logos in John 1.1 1, 1 does not mean word in this sense, nor does it mean a word like in a dictionary. The Greek term for word in a dictionary is lexis, from which we get lexicon, and it does not mean verbum, verbo, parola, palavra, parole, word, and so on. John's o logos is a person. It is generally thought that John wrote the fourth gospel at Ephesus, the birthplace of Heraclitus, Heraclitus, a Greek philosopher who was active at Ephesus around 500 BC. Heraclitus taught that Logos, which he compared to fire, is eternal, divine, and gives existence to everything in the universe, the cosmos. Heraclitus' philosophy was particularly popular among the Stoics of Ephesus, who read and discussed Heraclitus' writings well into the Christian era. In Stoicism, Logos was the first principle conceived as God, the one who brought the world into existence, gave it form, sustains it, and will finally judge it through fire. Hellenized Jews, such as first century Philo, used Logos to mean some divine being.
When John set out to present Jesus Christ as a central figure in his gospel to a Hellenized audience, he sought to draw attention in the most effective way possible. John brilliantly placed Ologos as a clincher in his introduction and nowhere else. Certain New Testament passages containing Ologos directly or indirectly allude to Jesus Christ. But the absolute identification of Ologos with Jesus Christ is confined to the four references in John's prologue. The preposition pros plus accusative tontheon means with God. O logos was from eternity in the presence of God. As Paul says, prior to incarnation, Christ, John's Ologos, was en morphi theou isa theo, in the form of God, equal with God. Prostontheon literally means with the God. The use of the article ton, the, before a noun, identifies that noun. In this case, the God means God the Father. By the reiteration of the conjunction ke, in ke theos in o logos, John emphasized that this very Logos, in addition to being from eternity with Theos, was himself Theos. In John 1, 1 c, Theos in o Logos, we see that the Greek syntax, word order, is reversed in English. In Greek, it reads, God was the Word, and in English, the Word was God. This manuscript is dated to about the second century. It's the first page of John's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. On the right shown are majuscules or capital letters that resemble those on the papyrus, the first two lines. The yellow line on the manuscript shows the Greek word order theos in ologos. The two letters with the overline stands for theos, God. In manuscripts, certain sacred names are abbreviated that way. The seed-like letter is a simplified form of sigma used in Hellenistic times and the Middle Ages. The word order syntax of the Greek sentence is very flexible. The four words in this clause can be arranged six different ways and without changing the essential meaning of the clause as long as the article O and Logos are locked together, you can rearrange the word order depending on your style and emphasis. John's word order is at the top of the list where it shows that Theos, God, is placed at the beginning of the clause for emphasis. The English sentence structure, on the other hand, is fixed. For instance, the subject of a sentence is typically placed at the beginning of the sentence. Since the word is the subject, it is placed at the beginning of the clause. Let's now examine the grammatical construct of John 1.1c. This clause has two nouns. One noun is theos, and the other is logos. 
Logos has an article. So it is an articular noun. Theos has no article, so it is an anerthros noun. The articular noun is identified by the definite article O as the subject. The remainder of the clause is the predicate. In the predicate, there is an anerthros noun, predicate noun, and a linking verb. Bear in mind that in English, the subject and the predicate are in reverse order. In this grammatical construct, the linking verb in connects the subject o logos to the predicate noun theos. Linking verb in directs attention to the properties and qualities of theos, which are ascribed to logos. Simply put, theos adjectivally describes logos. Thus, o logos was with all the attributes, essence, nature, and qualities of theos. If theos had an article, o, the clause would still be grammatically correct. But John knew that in that case, o theos and o logos would be one and the same person, God the Father. John described the Logos exactly the way he meant to, that is, as nothing less than Theos. Let's sum it all up. In this grammatical construct, where two nouns, both in the nominative or subject case, are joined by the linking verb imi, in this case, in was, with one noun being articular and the other anerthros, the articular noun is identified as the subject and the anerthros noun as a predicate noun. In such a case, the predicate noun modifies, describes the subject adjectivally. Hence, theos describes what o logos is. Understanding the role of the Greek article is paramount to understanding the structure and meaning of John 1.1. A comparison of the Greek and English articles, therefore, will prove helpful. The English definite article, the, has no grammatical gender, masculine, feminine, neuter. It is not inflected. It does not change forms, and it does not indicate number, singular or plural. English also has an indefinite article, a, as in a house, and an, as in an apple. Like the definite article, it has no grammatical gender, it is not inflected, and it has no plural. The table shows the 24 forms of the Greek definite article. Each of these forms, regardless of gender, number, or case, in English means the. The two forms we see in John 1.1 are the nominative or subject form o and the accusative or object form ton. Greek has no indefinite article. The closest to English a or an is the indefinite pronoun tis, masculine and feminine, and ti, neuter, meaning certain or anyone. For example, neaniskos tis, a certain young man. Greek also uses is, one, in a similar sense. For example, 
Is Gramatevs a certain scribe? Theos in Theos inologos has neither tis nor is, for it is an adjectival, and as such, it cannot be viewed as a count noun and take an article. New World Translation scholars view Theos in John 1.1c not as an adjectival, but as an indefinite count noun, so they place before it the indefinite article A and translate John 1.1c as the word was a god. If so, anarthros theos in John 1.6 could likewise be translated sent by a god, 112, children of a god, 113, born from a god, 118, no one has ever seen a god, and so on. In the context of John 1.1c, the concept of Ologos as the god or a god does not arise in Greek. The identity of o logos is not o theos, theostis, or is theos, but theos. When John wrote theos in o logos, he meant God was the word. John purposely placed Theos at the beginning of the clause for emphasis. According to the English idiom, God was the word becomes the word was God, but with the emphasis being lost in translation. En arhi in o logos, ke o logos in proston theon, ke theos in o logos, utos in en arhi proston theon. Panda di aftu e geneto, ke horis aftu e geneto, ude en o yegonen. En afto zoi in ke i zoi in to fos ton anthropon, ke to fos en discotia feni, ke iskotia afto u katelaven, e geneto anthropos apestalmenos para theu, onoma afto ioannis. Utos ilthen is martirian, ina martirisi peritu fotos. In a pandas pistesosin the aftu. Uk in e kinos tofos. Alina martirisi peri tu fotos. In tofos to alithinon. O fotisi panda anthropon er homenon iston gosmon. And o cosmo in ke o cosmos the aftu e geneto. Ke o cosmos afton. Ukegno, ista idia ilthen ke idi afton upar elavon, osi de elavon afton, edo ke naftis exusian tekna theu genesthe, tis pistevusin isto onoma aftu, i uk exematon ude exthelimatos sarkos, Ude exthelimatos andros alekthéu e genithisan. Ke o logos sarx e geneto. Ke eskinosen enimin. Ke theasametha tin doxan aftu. Doxan os monogenus para patros. Pliris haritos ke alithias. Ke alithias.